So I came across this article from Nerd Ralph about controlling the NRF 24L01 with only two microcontroller pins. And after reading this, I decided I have got to get this implemented in my Nerf Flight Library. So I will show you how to use it. So to get started, you need to install the latest version of the library. And I've got it integrated with the Arduino Library Manager now. So you can just open that up and you can search for Nerf Flight up in this search field once it loads. N-R-F-L-I-T-E is how you spell it. And then any version above two has got the two pin support. I've just been improving the examples in the later releases. So if you go to the examples now, uh, you'll see that I've got uh, all these basic ones and the TX ones, any of the four TX ones are compatible with these two RX ones. So you can mix and match which ones you'd like to try out. So I'll just open up a regular basic RX. So I'll have to get an Arduino set up that uses um, all the normal set of pins. And then we'll do a two pin one basic TX two pin and we'll show how that works and that's only going to be using uh, Arduino pin 9 and 10. So on my GitHub page there is a section now called the two pin hookup guide and it has a schematic with how you're going to want to hook up your radio to the breadboard and you'll want to follow this one rather than the one that Nerd Ralph has got on his website. Um, I'm using a little bit different capacitor and resistor values uh, than what he is suggesting. So just use this one instead. So let me get set up here. And what I've got is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor here between uh, I'm going to be using this as a ground rail, uh, ground rail, so it's going from ground over to this row. And then I've got a 1K resistor uh, jumping across here like that. And then over here, you can see I've got, I don't have a, um, a resistor that's between 3 and 6K, which is what I recommend um, for my on my schematic. So I've got two 10K resistors here in parallel to create a 5K resistor. So we're gonna be using that for the MOMI hookup. All right, so I've got uh, a radio here with all the pins ready to go. And so first thing, I will connect the power for the radio. Just jump them across like that. And then on this radio here, my two orange wires are the CE and the CSN pins and I'm going to put those on the same row that the capacitor and the 1k resistor is on. And then on the other side of the 1k resistor I'm going to be putting the serial clock line which happens to be this uh, brown colored wire. So there's the serial clock. And now for the MOSI connection, which is uh, happens to be this purple one, that's going to go on the left-hand side of my 5K resistor. And then the MISO wire is this white one. And it's going to go on the other side of my 5K resistor. So that's all the radio connections that we'll use. And then with the Arduino, I'll go ahead and provide a ground and power. And again, these radios can only take up to 3.6 volts for the VCC pin. So I'm going to be using one of these um, uh, USB to serial adapters, which has got a switch on it. You can change the output voltage. So I'm going to be running my Arduino at 3.3 uh, volts just to make it easy. And then I've got the uh, 
Arduino pins 9 and 10 up here. And 9, which is this blue one, the blue one is going to go over to the side which has got the MOSI connection. So blue is now what we call this in the two pin setup is MOMI, master out, master in. And then the yellow one, which is Arduino pin 10, that's going to go over to the serial clock side. And it's just called SCK, the serial clock still, even though it is used to control the serial clock line on the radio, as well as the CE and the CSN pins. So that is all the hookups that are required. Okay, I've got the basic RX example uploaded to an Arduino and the one, the Arduino that we just set up for two pin support. Uh, I haven't uploaded it yet, so we're not getting any data sent over. Um, but you'll see in the top of it that I've got a link to the two pin hookup guide, again, that you'll, you'll want to follow. And then we're going to be setting up our radio ID to be number two. We're going to be sending it over to the radio that's ID zero. And you'll see that when, uh, when we set up our RX radio, it is already set to zero. So that's good. And a couple variables for the MOMI and S clock pins. And we're going to be sending over uh, our radio ID how long we've been turned on, and then any failures that we've encountered. And as far as changes to the library, all you've got to do is use the init to pin uh, to set up the radio rather than the init uh, method for setting up the radio for using the hardware SPI. So that's the only difference as far as the code's concerned is init to pin. So uh, let me go ahead and upload this. And get the serial monitor going. All right, so we're sending over here and it will say success or failure. And then this is what we've received on the other side. And if I go and unplug the receiver, you'll see that it starts to fail. And uh, I'll plug it back in. And I might have to reset this again. So there we go. So now it is receiving all those. And we had, we had some failures in there. So that's, um, that's all you've got to do for the, pace, the basic TX two pin example. Okay, the last example that I wanted to show is for the sensor. So I've opened up the sensor RX example and I've got it uploaded to my Arduino and it's connected just with the normal hardware SPI. And then over on the transmitter side, I will open up the sensor TX ATtiny85 two pin. And I've actually already got an Arduino, um, an ATtiny85 AT programmed with this, but I'll just open this up to show you everything. Uh, importantly, at the very top of this, I mentioned the, the ATtiny board, board information or board library that you need to use is the one from the MIT group. And I've got that listed right on the front page of the library here. Um, so right here, ATtiny85 support is available with MIT High Low Tech Arduino Library. So they've got a great write-up about it here and how to install it. Here's a link to their GitHub for it. Um, so the sensor example uses a lot of uh, memory and the ATtiny Core library that some people are using, um, it's it just, it's got so much junk in it, um, it uses a lot more memory and it will not fit. And I'll, I'll show you that too. So if we come here over to the board, here's the AT Tiny Core. And make sure that the 85 is selected here. And we'll try to compile. 
and you will see here that we've run out of space. So we're 212 bytes over. But uh, if you use the MIT library, which puts these two entries into your boards, you get 85. And we've got 885 selected. And this will compile just fine. So the, the MIT library probably isn't as full featured as that AT Tiny Core one, but that's kind of you know the, the mantra that I've got with the whole Nerf Light library anyways. It's also not um, as full featured as other libraries, but it's uh, simple and um, uh, hopefully in my mind, it's just a little bit more elegant because of that. Um, the, we can see the MIT one, um, here you, Ends up this example ends up using 88% of the program space, so it is you know quite big using most of the available memory, but uh, there's still even more room left. So um, let's go ahead and show you the circuit uh, that this AT Tiny needs. I've got it up here, at sensor, and this JPEG. I uh, just drew the circuit, took a picture, and put it in here. Um, so here's your AT Tiny 85, and I've got this reset button here. Hooked up to pin one, the reset switch, and then the two pin hookup guide. So the MOMI and the S clock. You'll need to use that two pin hookup guide to to hook these things up. So I'm not showing all the the capacitor and the resistors for these two guys. Uh, you'll have to just go back to the two pin hookup guide for these guys. Um, but then for the other pins, so physical pin number two here is hooked up between a thermistor and a 10K resistor. So we'll be able to measure the temperature. And physical pin seven is hooked up between a light dependent resistor and a resistor. So we'll be able to measure brightness. And then I'm using pin number five, physical pin number five, to power these two sensors. And also I hooked up an LED to it just so I can see when physical pin five is powered on um, you could use you know you could just use five for something different than this i'm just using it to put the circuit into a low power state um, when the at tiny 85 is in a sleep mode and then i'm running everything off 3.3 volts so there's the vcc here and you're you're able to measure the voltage of the at tiny uh, without a pin um, so we're also going to be sending over that data so um, Here's the data that we're sending over. So there's the brightness from the light dependent resistor, uh, the temperature, and the voltage. And then also there's a temperature type. You can change it to send over Celsius or Fahrenheit. So let me plug in my AT Tiny 85 circuit. And let me hit the reset button on it. And there we go. So we're getting all that data sent over and you can see um, it shows the radio ID, number of fails transmissions, the brightness, temperature, and the voltage. So the extra special thing that this um, example shows, and there's a, there's a big comment in the sensor RX about it, um, is you can change sensor settings from the receiver. So uh, let's say we have more than one sensor and we need to change the ID because by default um, each sensor, it's just going to, this, this will make it ID uh, one by default. So we can uh, change the ID of radio number one uh, to be something like, you know, like 250. And uh, just, set, just set that up and you'll see we've got changing ID to 250 and then now Radio is 250, and we got a message saying saving settings. So it saves all these settings to the EEPROM of the AT Tiny. Um, so when if I go and hit the reset button again, uh, you'll see it just loads settings and loaded up that 250 again. So you can change a bunch of different things. So like the sleep interval right now is short; it's like one second. So maybe you'd only want to take a reading once every minute. You know, you could change it to 60 seconds, but uh, let's change the uh, sleep interval of radio ID number 250 to uh, 3. So it'll be once every 3 seconds. 
So it'll let you know, okay, I'm gonna change the sleep interval and saves the settings. And now you can see they're coming in a little bit slower. And let's say that um, we'd like to see the temperature in Fahrenheit. So that's gonna be, uh, Fahrenheit is number one here. So we do change temperature type of radio ID 250 to one. And then changing temperature type. And now it's in Fahrenheit. So uh, kind of cool, you can make all these adjustments to it. So you might have to calibrate the voltage um, or the temperature. And so you can also, you can send over a calibration uh, factor. Um, now there are some limitations to how this is working because it's using an acknowledgement data packet. Um, and I explained the limitations up here uh, in the sensor RX. So just, just an example, just to kind of show off what you can do with a AT8085 uh, with the, the Snurflight library and only using two pins for the radio.